Yeah. Real thing. Hi. Howdy. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? Good. You, uh, I suspect you got to be at a certain place in your life before you can make a record like The List. Yeah, I, for a lot of reasons. One, these songs require uh, a full life to be brought to them. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think I could have sung some of these songs when I was 25 or 30. But also the list itself, um, you know, it seems a paradox that you don't appreciate what your parents leave you until they're gone, whether it's a recipe or a set of china or a way of saying something. And I didn't really put much stock or attention onto the list that my dad gave me until, you know, 2005, a few years after he was gone. So what happened it, one day? It's like, you know, uh, a, a parent sits a kid down and says, I got to tell you something. In your case, your dad would have been like, I got to tell you something. <laughs> That's and, good. You know, and then did he sit you down and say, listen, Rosie, you got to do these songs one day? Uh, he didn't say Rosie because my stepsister's name was Rosie, right. and that would have been very confusing right. for us. Um, I was on the road with him, and I didn't, we started talking about songs. And Is this when you were 18 you were on the road 18, with him? 18, yeah. And um, he mentioned a song. I said, I don't know that one, Dad. And he mentioned another. I said, I don't know that one either. And he kind of got alarmed. I mean, I only listen to rock and roll, and he loves rock and roll. He loved rock and roll, too. But he thought I was lacking this other half of my musical DNA. So he spent the rest of the day making this list for me. And across the top, he wrote 100 essential country songs. And he said, this is your education. How much? In terms of when you decided to make this record at this stage of your life and career mm -hmm. was, I mean, you try to build your own identity. You can't, yeah. you can't run away from who your family is because you've won the most famous music fans. I in tried. The world. Yeah, yeah, you certainly did. And, and that, that in and of itself is tough to, yeah. to go through that. Well, I don't think I was that different from any young person who wants to carve out their own identity and do it themselves and separate from their parents. Everybody wants to do that in their 20s. It's just that my dad cast a very long shadow and I was also a musician, you know. It was, mm -hmm. so I was over um, scrupulous about not appearing to take advantage of him or not exploiting him, not using him, not trading on his name. And then I realized, I, I'm not a kid, you know, I'm 54 years old. At some point, it's extremely ungracious to keep denying your legacy. <laughs> and, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work at my age. And besides that, there's so much joy now and um, satisfaction and just a humility in seeing what my dad gave me. Not just this list of songs, but what's in back of that list, which is really like I said, his heart and soul. Is it kind of, I, I think liberating is the wrong word, but I don't know, maybe it's the right word. Is it liberating that you're at this place now where you can do these songs yes. and talk about it? It is liberating. It's like, it's, it's as if I was holding back a part of myself all these years and the energy required to keep part of yourself away and now to just take it in. So much so that my daughter, my mid middle daughter, um, just made her first record. And it came out a couple of months ago, and right before it came out, she called me and she said, where's my list? Just give her Johnny's. <laughs> give oh, her no, I got, a, I got my own list formulating, you know. There's going to be a little bit of the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, and it'll be a different list than this one, but no, overlap. Right. The, um, you know, for a whole generation, okay, people who don't know some of these songs are going to hear these songs if you do them, and they're going to know these songs. There's a whole generation of people who've heard your dad do covers in the, in the latter part of his life, and covers that changed. What did, you, what did you think when you first heard his cover of Hurt? You know, the Nine Inch Nails mm -hmm. song. I mean, you know, um, he was very ill at that time. And I knew they had made a video because um, they sent it to all of the children, a, a DVD of the video. And That's a heavy video. I didn't watch it. I, I had a feeling, because I knew the song. <laughs> and my sister called me and she said, did you get the video in, in the mail, the DVD? I said, yes. And she said, be careful. That's all she said. So I didn't watch it until I went down to see my dad next time. And he said, have you seen it? And I said, no. He said, I'll, I'll watch it with you. So, you know, I was watching it. It was, I was just sobbing. It was so painful. And he was just looking at it as if it were a painting he had done, just with an artist's eye. It's, he was, he was always like that, though. I mean, even his own mortality, he could look at with an artist's eye. That video is the Mona Lisa. That, yeah. if, if they put that video in a time capsule, generations from 
from now will find it and go, wow, yeah, they were so. about something. Yeah. Do you, that part of it I, I find fascinating about any artist's life when, especially because you sing songs that you have to have feeling. You, you, mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't just go out there and do a standard melody. I wonder, your family is public, but the pain is still private. What's, how do you manage all of that over the years? Which pain? <laughs> well, yeah. well, yours, the family, it's because it became infamous. And then, and then they make a movie, right? And people see this movie. Well, yeah, you know, the movie. Um, that was, you know, how would you feel if somebody made a Hollywood movie about your childhood? I wouldn't like it at all. Yeah, no, yeah. nobody would. Nobody would. So I, it, was, it was difficult. I went to Paris when it premiered, so I wouldn't have to be <laughs> around. Um, <laughs> But do you know what was interesting is I took my daughter, they screened it for me ahead of time, which was very kind of them, but I took my daughter who was 14 at the time, and at the end, she watched it, and at the end she said, well, that was a good movie. You know, like it was, you know, any movie. I thought, well, it just hit me. Oh, it's not, it's for other people yeah. who don't have these references. And so then it's fine. The pain, I, you know, well, I'm an artist. I, I write. I'm a songwriter. Tell me about your mother. My mother? Yeah. Because I hear about your dad. We all hear about your stepmother. Tell me about your mother. Uh, my mother was Sicilian. Vivian, is that? Yeah. yeah. She was a Sicilian Texan. Oh, yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, right. There was no reasonable. It was all like, wow, you know, crazy. Um, Big, everything is big, big emotions. Um, she was a very fierce mother, she, you know, and if you had her loyalty, you had it for life. And she was a, um, you know, very strict, strict Catholic, t Italian, Texas mm -hmm. Catholic. <laughs> you know what's great is that my dad was so different from my mother, and I, I managed to get good things from both of them. Mm -hmm. I got my mother's sense of discipline and structure, and my dad's just the expansive way he saw the world and a great work ethic. Mm -hmm. did, what did you get from June? Did you get anything from her? A lot from June. June was um, crazy. <laughs> and uh, I mean, June in that Hurt video, but the two of them together, that yeah. was overwhelming. Yeah. Crazy in a good way or crazy in a... Oh, no, crazy like a fox. Yeah. And she, she was a performer since, you know, birth practically. So she could uh, be having a conversation to you with you and just keep walking right out onto stage and pick, you know, and never break the conversation. Yeah, and nail the notes. And nail the notes. I, I, actually, there's a great story about, she told me that she was on the road, those package shows back in the 50s, you know, when there were like six acts. Mm -hmm. And the act going on before the Carter family, their banjo player hadn't shown up. And they said, does anybody play banjo? And she says, I do. And so she went out and she played the banjo, played the whole set with them. And she said, well, honey, I had never played the banjo in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, how did you know how to do it? When, she said, well, honey, when I walked on stage, I knew how to play the banjo. Like, when you walked on stage, yeah. <laughs> you could do anything. <laughs> So that's fearless. So it's totally fearless, and that's what I took from her. You mentioned that your daughter, you know, she's 27 years old, mm -hmm. which is a nice age to put her to record as opposed to 17. Yeah. How old was she when she told you she wanted to do this? She didn't. She had finished writing a record, an entire album, before I knew she was a songwriter. How does she do that? She plays it very close to the vest. She's just like somebody I know. Um, <laughs> That was just like me. And she uh, then made this record before I ever heard it. And she's unbelievable. She's such a great songwriter. Is that a, is that a bittersweet thing for you? Because yeah. you, that's where you'd want to be a part of that. No, I totally understood it. It didn't hurt my feelings at all. I totally got it that she, not only did she need to push away from me, but her dad is a very renowned musician, Rodney Crowell. Mm -hmm. Her grandfather, her step-grandmother. I mean, there's like musicians everywhere. She had to go off in a cave and do this. I respected that. What, what was the bittersweet part? Well, because she called me um, and said, right before it came out, she said, how do I have a successful life as a musician without getting famous? And that's exactly the question I had asked younger than her. I said, you're talking, I don't know, you're talking to the wrong person. I always wondered this about a, a, a child, uh, even though you have your own career, and, I, and I, your daughter, I would ask her this question, as, as I would ask you. 
do you, can you learn about your parent from listening to their records? Because people forget yeah. their parents have lives and they've lived their lives sometimes and they have stories. Can you learn about your family from listening? Absolutely. I, I mean, if I listen to my dad's song, Big River, which he wrote as a young man, and that song, I've studied that song, not only to learn about him, but to learn about great songwriting, because it's one of the best pieces of American poetry that I know. And he follows the Mississippi River visually in this song all the way from Davenport, Iowa, all the way down to Memphis. And it's just fueled by testosterone. You know, it's all about the chase, mm -hmm. finding this woman, getting this woman. So, A, I learned my dad is like, you know, <laughs> testosterone fueled <laughs> at a young age, and he's chasing women, yeah. and that he has this cinematic um, inner vision of southern landscape, you know. The way he describes it, it's like, it's like Faulkner or somebody. And you, how's your health? Very good. Because you've had a couple of quality scares in your life. Quality. Yeah. The brain thing is fine? My brain is um, fine. Yeah. I had brain surgery in 2007, but I'm good. Uh, my husband had a joke, yeah, she had brain surgery, they didn't find anything. <laughs> I, 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 so there will be more records th from the list, um, I, su I suppose? Yes. Definitely a second, maybe a third. Probably after that, I wouldn't want to <laughs> push my luck. Uh, it's a really good record. If I may recommend, the, the, the song she does with Tweety, uh, um, Long Black Veil, is, is a really great one. It's called The List. It's Roseanne Cashman. Come on. Nice to see you. Thank you.